Hi, I'm Caleb Hill, and this is my path towards data science. Welcome to the end of week number three of my path towards data science. We're going to be diving in to five cool pandas tricks that I learned this last week through the data school. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and read in uh, all these different libraries here to get us started. Um, of course, we, we're doing pandas as PD and some other cool things. Um, and I'm going to read in this, this uh, data set uh, called Titanic. It comes from Kaggle, which is a, a data science uh, competition website. And just an overview of this data set, um, we've got Titanic data from each individual that was on the Titanic and whether or not they survived and some uh, demographic information about the individuals. All right. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was this data frame apply function. This is really useful if I want to apply a function to an entire series uh, or a column in a data frame. And I find this to be useful, say for instance, that we wanted to take the fair price uh, or the amount that the, uh, the ticket cost for a passenger to go on the Titanic. And we wanted to see, well, how much would that cost in today's uh, dollar amount? And so I've, I've got a function, this lambda function, that essentially is going to multiply um, by 29.81, or the amount of inflation that has occurred since 1912 when the uh, uh, Titanic sunk. And so I can go ahead and apply uh, that to the fair column, so titanic.fair.apply, and I'm applying that uh, rounding to the, the second decimal place so that we have a dollar amount and you can check it out now. I've got the 2022 fare cost uh, for each of the uh, passengers. So the second thing that we're going to talk about um, is the pandas.cut uh, function. Essentially what this allows us to do is it allows us to take a continuous uh, variable like age um, and break it up into groups. So in this example, I'm breaking the ages into three groups, children under the age of 18, young adults under the age of 30, and adults, anyone else. Um, so let's go ahead and run that and see what it did. All right, so you can see here that we've got young adult, adult, young adult, adult, et cetera, uh, just based on the age. And again, that's very useful, especially in a data science setting where you do have a continuous variable, but you want to see groups instead of uh, some association with that continuous variable. Um, that could be a very useful, useful technique. So next we're going to talk about pivot tables. Uh, pivot tables are essentially a way of aggregating our data um, in a nice view for us to see. So for example, if I wanted to see the mean aggregated by sex and class, this would be a really useful table to, for me to look at. Um, so let's go ahead and run it. So you'll notice um, we've got female and first class is $3,163. Um, again, that's in 2022 fair price. This is a really nice uh, way of viewing our data and just getting an overview uh, by the different types of groups that we could make up here. To show you another example, using the age group that we previously created, um, we can take a look here. Um, what is the cost of each ticket based on the, uh, the age group that these people are falling into? But it's just, again, another a really great way to see an aggregation of all of the, the data um, and could be useful just in your uh, initial data analysis. One other thing that I should say about this is that the margins equals true is essentially just grabbing this, this last column and row here uh, where we see the mean of all. Okay, so we're going to continue on. Um, we are going to do joins in pandas, which are very useful. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create two data frames here uh, with just some information about colors and size. Um, 
And what we're going to do here is we're going to see what kinds of uh, ways we can combine these tables together. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called an inner join, which essentially is going to try to match the tables by some column. And in this example, I've, I am matching on the color. Um, and it's going to look to see if there's a match. And if there's a match, it will remain in the table. If there's not a match, it will not stay in the table. So you can see clearly we've got green and yellow in both of the tables, and then red and pink are not in both of the tables. So let's see what happens. Boom, there we go. So we've got green and yellow that both came across as we merged these tables or joined these tables together with an enter join. And we describe which join we're using with this how uh, parameter. An outer join is going to grab everything from both tables, uh, matching still, but um, putting the NAN value where there is no data for that one from the other table. Um, and that is, could be a really useful thing to do if we just want to see all the data from both tables. Um, then we have a left join, which is going to grab everything from this left table. And so you'll notice that this green, yellow, red is everything from A, green, yellow, red. But we've excluded pink because it's not in the left table. And finally, um, we're seeing the right, which is the, the opposite of that. Again, I'm, I'm saying I want to do this by the color on the left and color on the right. That's what they're matching on. Uh, very useful to be able to join in uh, Pandas. Okay, finally, um, I would like to just chat really fast about being able to grab lots of data files. Um, so I've gone ahead and created these CSV files uh, that have all of this financial data from FANG companies, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google. Um, and so they just have the, the stock value over, over the last few days for each of these companies, but they're each in their own CSV file, which I wanna see them all together. I wanna be able to compare them and do some analysis on them. So how can I grab them all and uh, put them in the same table? Well, I can use the glob library, which is a standard Python standard library meaning I don't have to install it, it comes with Python. I can say, hey, I want everything inside of this stocks folder that's a CSV, I don't care uh, what it's called. And so I can grab that and I'll show you what that looks like. And that says stocks, I want Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Netflix, um, which again is very useful, a very powerful tool to be able to just grab all these files. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to read in each of the files in that stocks files list that I just created, and I'm going to concatenate them all together. So basically I'm creating uh, essentially a list of uh, pandas data frames, and I'm concatenating them all into one fangs stocks uh, data frame. And the reason I have to say ignore index is because I want the index to continue to get bigger rather than restarting every time I read in a new CSV. So I run that. And I now have this uh, fang stocks. Let's just take a look at what that looks like. And you'll notice I've got the volume, the date, and all this stuff uh, from Apple all the way down to Netflix and everything in between there. Very useful. And just to kind of demonstrate what we can do with that, I'm going to plot these. Um, and we can kind of see the trends over time. Um, it's not the per most perfect plot in the world, but this is what I'm using the Seaborn uh, library for is to, to plot this. Um, we can see the trends over time for each of these tech stocks. It's really interesting to me to note uh, that t t tech stocks have gone down in the recent uh, month or so. Just to show you where I'm getting the data from, it's actually from Yahoo Finance. Um, they have daily trends, even like every five minutes or something like that, trends of, of financial data, um, which is really powerful and very useful. So those are the five things I learned this week about pandas. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you did. Subscribe. Follow me on my path towards data science. We'll see you next week.